with the wonderful Eden Gardens. Another fantastic day here. Um, and today uh, I'd like to talk about one of my favourite topics, which is uh, edible landscaping. And I've been doing this for, I guess, 20 years. Um, so every plant in my gut, virtually every plant in my gun, I don't eat the grass, but um, uh, most of the rest of it, um, a hedge, a tree, um, a bush, anything, ground covers are generally edible. Um, and of late, I've become more excited and interested about the, uh, you know, the native uh, flora, particularly through the, you know, like the harsh weather that we've had in recent times. Um, you know, I think a lot of these, these plants are much more adapted um, you know, to our environment. So uh, you know, I've really you know, started exploring them. I mean, this, if you've ever watched Eden TV before, you know lemon myrtle, can't get enough of it. Um, so that's been there forever in my garden. The most fantastic plant for, for teas. Um, an exciting addition that I'm looking to get into my garden soon. A nice shade tree. I'm always looking for shade. And this is the very attractive pinkalicious uh, uh, macadamia tree. So uh, macadamia is uh, a native nut. In fact, the only commercially, um, commercially used Australian um, or, or internationally commercially used uh, Australian born fruit, if you like. But these are really beautiful because they've actually got very, it's about a four meter tree with beautiful um, pink flowers that are probably about five centimeters long and heaps of nuts. So uh, well worth that as a, as a, uh, as a, as a, as a uh, medium you know, shade tree. Uh, fantastic ground cover. This is Warrigal Greens. Um, so it will grow anywhere. Uh, you, you often see it down by the, um, you know, the seaside, but it's, uh, Really, really easy to grow. It grows in lots of uh, lots of different conditions. I've I've actually had this one for for years in my garden, um, and it's great um, as a. Uh, you need to cook it because it does have a little bit of oxalate in it. But as long as you kind of uh, sort of blanch it first, fantastic green. Um, this one is new to me, um, but is uh, very clearly a member of the uh, the, the parsley celery family. It's uh, sea celery they call this. Um, uh, and it's yeah a fantastic uh, uh, parsley sort of taste, full of vitamin C. Um, so you know, being used for a long time for you know for sailors etc. for scurvy uh, or to prevent scurvy. Um, the old lily pilly. This, so this is a, the 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 brush cherry, um, you know, one of the many lily pillies. But this one has really nice uh, fruit in it. Fantastic as a, as a small tree or as a hedge, um, and great for making you know jams, fruits, wine even. Um, if you've got a larger garden or, or perhaps contemplating a street tree, um, this is the uh, uh, they call it the brown the the brown pine or the plum pine, uh, Podocarpus. Absolutely beautiful um, leaves. It's a, it's actually a conifer, very weird conifer doesn't have cones, has these fleshy, um, fleshy seeds, which uh, taste really nice, but it's, it is a big tree, probably um, can get up to sort of 10 meters tall, probably not so much in your street, but it, it was still a large tree, so probably more for the street or the larger garden, uh, but absolutely beautiful. Um, you often see that in landscapes. Um, another ground cover, this is a creeping salt bush. The salt bush is all the rage with the uh, celebrity chefs, but it's actually really nice. Um, you know, either fresh or, or indeed um, uh, dried. You know, it gives a salty taste uh, into 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 foods. And I've seen recently people have actually put it into beers. For a shady hollow, this is um, uh, the the native ginger. Uh, so all parts of it taste quite sort of mildly gingery. Um, so that you know it does have a, a root like a ginger, uh, but it also has interesting berries that not a lot of flesh on the berries, but the berries uh, they're sort of blue in color and they've got a lemony ginger taste. So that's that's really interesting. This is one I've never tasted, but um, uh, called the wild currant. Um, so I'm, I'm, again, you can grow it as a nice uh, uh, pot specimen or or indeed as a as a, a hedge or a, a very small tree. Um, so I'm very keen to, to give that one a go. Um, this is another salt bush. This is a, this is that one's a, a, a ground cover. 
This one could be a neat sort of uh, sort of grey hedge, if you like, just sort of uh, you know kind of cut it back a bit like a um, you know like a curry bush or something like that. So it's uh, you know again really quite attractive you know contrast foliage. And then a favourite of mine uh, is the I've got I've got a little one of these uh, at home, which is a uh, medium berry. So really really nice um, melt in your mouth. Uh, white berries um, they they're good enough to sell in the shops but unfortunately they don't they don't travel so you'll, you'll never be able to buy them in the shops so the only way to enjoy them is, is to to try it yourself um, so I strongly recommend that you know if you've got a, a little niche in your garden that uh, uh, you're not eating anything from consider some of these Australian natives okay see you next time